Today, of course, is a feast of the Holy Family. And it's fitting that the Holy Family, this celebration happens right now in such close proximity to Christmas. Because after all, we are made in the image and likeness of God. We have an intellect and we have a will. And because of that intellect and will, we have the capacity to love. And it is that love made manifest in truth that caused our Savior, Jesus Christ, to come to us in the flesh, in the household of Joseph and Mary. Each family emblematic of God's love, that formation of the Blessed Trinity, that intense love between the persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which is itself generative, a magneto of love, if you will. And likewise, each family ought to reflect this mystery of the Trinity and become generative of love. Hence the importance of children, as most families in this parish know, in their families. The more we reflect God, the greater our love manifests itself in concrete ways, in the creation of children, the forming of relationships, the accepting of others. It's no surprise that our Lord would use the family as the vehicle by which he encounters humanity. It is so integral to our life. It's the one thing that forms everything that we are and everything that we become. Our initial understanding of God is born in our families. Our relationship with our Father teaches us about our relationship with God the Father, our relationship with our Mother, with the Blessed Virgin. And all the saints and angels, we learn how to have a relationship with them through our siblings and our extended family. And this is how we need to think of the family. In relation to the heavenly family. Because we can only properly understand the heavenly family in our experience at home. And we can only establish a perfect home in our relationship with the divine. This is because heavenly realities teach us about true and authentic love. We must always remember that God is the archetype of all of these things because he is the author. He is the author. And he has a desire for us to use this creation, this creation of his, the family, for the salvation of the world. The family is the fundamental unit of his church. The family is the fundamental unit of society. 
It is the most basic building block of these visible entities. Contrary to contemporary belief, it is not the individual. The individual is always lacking something. As it says in Genesis, the man Adam, it was not good for him to be alone. He needed something. He needed a helpmate. And their first command together was to be fruitful and to multiply, to form a family. Now, our families are assaulted day in and day out by our culture. Our culture has forgotten what the family is. Almost everything that we do in current American and Western society is contrary to the flourishing of the family. Even the way we think about the family. As Americans, we tend to think of the family as the nuclear family. A husband, a wife, a child or two, and some animals. Or actually, nowadays, in some places, it's switched. So it's usually animals and maybe some children. Especially in San Francisco. That nuclear family, that 1950s vision of the family, is itself an assault against the family. The family includes our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, our cousins, our aunts and uncles, all of those relations that are near to us, related by blood. They are there to assist us and help us. No parent... None of you parents out there should ever have to reinvent the wheel in parenting. That's insane. One should have their parents with them to help them so that you can rely on their wisdom and their guidance. And likewise, they rely on the wisdom and guidance of their own families their own parents. Having uncles to assist with the kids when you're just a little too tired. You might need a day, an evening, to take a break. Your children should have the opportunity to grow up with their cousins. Now, I know to some degree I'm preaching to the choir here at Holy Rosary. One of the most beautiful things about this parish is that you all take family so seriously. It's such an important part of this parish community and the reason why I think this parish is so strong, so vibrant. Because you are on the forefront because of that, because of the importance of the family. On the forefront of the reestablishment of Christian culture. Because as I said, the family is not for ourselves. It's more than that. It's the base unit of society. It's the fundamental unit of the church. And if we want the church to be healthy, if we want society to be healthy, we must have healthy families. It must start there. The reestablishment of Christian culture begins in the home. It begins with you. It does not begin with us, the clergy. We are the fruit of families. And we serve families. But it is the role and responsibility of the family to sustain and to grow the church, to sustain and grow society. And as one of my favorite authors, John Sr., would say, we must reestablish a heart, a heart, 
a center to our families. Now, if you don't do this, and this sounds absurd in very late 1800s, I, I don't know, but in the center of our home should be a hearth. And that burning flame, symbolic of the burning flame in our hearts for each other. And around that fire, we read. We read to each other. We read novels and books. The great books. The thousand good books. And as John Sr. would say, smash the television set. Because in the place of that hearth, we've simply placed entertainment. Something to dull the senses. Yet one more thing that separates us and divides us, even in our very households. How many families do we know that don't even share a meal together anymore? They merely go to their corners in their home like a boxing match. Just one less fight and that's okay. And then everyone pulls out their screens, whether they be televisions in their rooms or iPads or iPhones or whatever you have. And and everyone doing their own little thing instead of coming together as a family and doing something that nourishes the soul, nourishes the spirit, builds relationships, and reestablishes the culture that we desire. As Catholics, we will not win the quote-unquote culture war until we win it in our homes. That is the front of this battle. In our homes is where we learn to practice charity, deferring one to the other in all good things. In our home, we learn how to preach the gospel. Parents first to their children, and sometimes children to their parents. It is in the home where we learn to pray. And as we make our homes holy, like that home in Nazareth, then the strength of that home can extend beyond itself. So that that internal evangelization can turn to an external evangelization. And the stronger that family unit, because of love, the more that it can withstand sorrow, tragedy, and other wounds, but also the more it can welcome others into it. Friends, extended family, especially those who are more marginalized. Those of you here who have families, which just about everybody in here, your own families. You have a great task. Your task is nothing less than the reestablishment of Christian culture. Nothing less than that. But it's a marvelous task. And it's something that we should all be proud to be a part of. And all have the zeal and the desire to fulfill it. 
Rome was subverted, pagan Rome was subverted, not by warfare. It was subverted by Christian love. So if we want that to happen again, if we want our society to be reestablished with the virtues and the ideas that we cherish, that we value, that we want to promote, then we must turn our families into units of grace and of mission. And if we do so, then we will be rewarded both in this life and the life to come.